Well, we're live, so you can roll it, Fred. Fuck. Um, all right, so welcome to the second and long-awaited episode of Comic Books Brew and Chew. I don't know. There's a... Issues, Brews, and Chew. Thank you. Comics Brew and Chew, I thought. What's our name? I don't know. You I vote. Like you decide. So we're gonna, we've are gonna. we been arguing about this. Even though we named the podcast for the first episode, we're still arguing. Because everything sounds good and nothing sounds right at the same time. But Fred, you sound right. Ah, uh, shut up, Tom. But for the second episode... We have decided to do, um, what is it, Prince of Cats, and then February passed, so we decided not to do Prince of Cats, and then for March, and then for March we decided to do uh, Mike Mignola, so we we're gonna do Gotham by Gaslight, and then March passed, and then for April we were like, we're gonna do Punk Rock Jesus. We missed two months. Yeah. Because Tom doesn't know how to drive, and John and I don't know how to coordinate work schedules. We don't, I mean, it's not that we don't know how. It's we, just, we just don't it's have the power. Because we both do so much. Yes. They can't give us both time off. Exactly. And I'm just innocent in all of this. Yeah. Yeah. Amanda's a casualty of Tom's inability to drive. It's not an inability. I have my 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 nice little orange thing now. It's because we live in a state where nobody can drive. And they rear end me and total my car. So, um, after much success, we have gotten back around to doing um Brian Augustine and Mike Mignola's Batman Gotham by Gaslight, one of the first uh mainstream Elseworlds titles to come out of the DC universe. Um I've Wait, you it. mean it's not in continuity? It is not in continuity. It is set in a uh, Victorian Gotham, where uh, a Batman is patrolling, chasing down the feared Jack the Ripper. Who is he? Why is he killing horse in Gotham? The world may never know, or the world's greatest detective could figure it out. But not unless he stops and talks to our good friend Sigmund Freud in the opening scene of the comic. That's actually... So, full disclosure, I'm a history major, but this is not my subject of expertise. But it's still cool that they try to at least throw in some historical context yeah, the f- for the majority of it. A, a lot of it, too, is very relevant to Batman as, you know, detective like that. Yeah. yeah. With the psychoanalysis and the leading theories that we know don't really hold up today in that regard, but were the leading theories at the time. He's more of, would he be, no, no, Hugo Strange was the alienist, right? They yeah. refer to him as an alienist. Yeah. But is Strange even in... Strange isn't in the book. He's in no, the he's a pretty prominent part in the film. Whole nother story. Which we are also going to cover because I happen to get a copy and distribute it amongst the group in order to watch it for the most part. Tom, uh, John totally watched it on a credible website. Yep. <laughs> but um, <laughs> So we're going to also do a comparison of the recent re- recently released um, DC Animated Universe... Batman Gotham by Gaslight. I like that Fred holds up the comic when he talks about the comic and the book when he talks about the book I'm just as proud if we're to, on camera. I'm just proud to own both of them because I've waited so long to watch this stupid movie <laughs> and I haven't had this comic in like three months since I owned it away to you guys. And I kind of forgot what happened. So you I could have go, came and gotten it at any time. You only got it like last no. week. No. Yes. No, because I remember. I, I put Fine. it here the day of James' birthday. Okay, yeah. While really? you were drunk on your couch, I put it on the table next to your couch. Wait, no, you weren't drunk on James' birthday. You were drunk on... I don't know. I don't I remember. Probably, I don't know. Someone was. Anyways. The scale to bruise, chews, and comics on this couch differ amongst everybody. Hmm. But, uh, yeah, the book. The book. I hated it. Did you? I did not like it. Why, John? I... I just... As John picks up the book. I, there's, I didn't really care for the art. See, now the know. art was Ooh. my favorite thing about it. I, I I'm know. a big Manola fan. I don't like this. I thought the story was fine, but it was never anything more than just fine to me. I really like me. his darker art and the style, but when it goes to like daytime, I just find it kind of... Yeah, just, so just I'm much. very fond of his work with Hellboy and BPRD and all of the Hellboy spinoffs like that. And there was, I will say this, as much, you know, a big fan of Manola as I am, and I liked his take on Batman, a lot of it didn't live up to his usual stuff. The one scene that I absolutely adored the art in was the ending confrontation in the cemetery. Yeah. I like the gargoyles and the you know gravestones and all of that. The angels and all of those statues so look so, absolutely gorgeous. So when he was style. drawing, when he was drawing Hellboy and then just replaced it with Batman, yep. is when it looked the best. Yes, pretty I, much. I just find his faces took me out of it. Like every time I saw a face, I was like, "That's the one he went with." Like, oh, like like when Gordon when Gordon's laughing and it's clearly that picture of Teddy it's Roosevelt. It's the picture of Teddy Roosevelt, Roosevelt laughing. Yeah. 
which is a comment I've heard like every criti- like critic and commentator on comics refer to it. I, I think it's in um, I'm pretty sure it's not really, but I'm pretty sure in Marvel Civil War, at one point they show this is a little bit of trivia I know they show the helicarrier, and the helicarrier is very clearly the instructions from a Lego set, but with some extra things drawn onto it, and it's like it's like the first snow speeder for uh, Lego for Star Wars from like '99. And it's someone even like I've seen like a comparison of like that page on the instruction booklet and then the helicarrier and there's no denying it. I um and there is a good segue from this too. Um, I've been reading a stupid amount of aliens comics lately, with you mentioning that. Mm-hmm. And so many of the early nineties and um aliens comics use like um and even some of the l- latest ones. They'll just use posed stills of the NECA and McFarlane figures as a basis for the art, and they just have this awful static look to them. Ugh. But also on, you know, to bring it back to this, Mike Manola drew one of those comics, and that one had some pretty fantastic art. He was pretty perfect for that universe. I'm pretty sure it was in the, uh, in the movie, and Gordon's... Well, I mean, the movie and the book differ because... Jack the Ripper's identity differs. Yeah. All right. So, I was kind of hoping to hold it off till the end, but it's kind of unavoidable only because I think the movie is fresher in everybody's mind. Kind of start talking about the differences. So spoilers between the movies and the books, and we can go back and forth talking about what we liked and didn't like about both. Go from there. But as you were saying, John, Gordon turns out to be the killer in the movie. In the movie. In the book, it is uh, Bruce's uncle Jake, who's not actually his uncle. It's a close family friend who worked with his dad in uh, the Civil War and then uh, had a crush on Martha lost Martha why did you say that name uh, Martha and I'm only dying because of this beer Um, loses Martha to Thomas and then uh, he hires the assassin to kill the entire Wayne family because he's a douchebag like that and uh, some bats come out of a tree and scare uh, the gunman away so Jake goes to Europe becomes Jack the Ripper to like try to silence the laughing Martha in his head and then comes back to Gotham and, like, for, like, he doesn't even plan on killing Bruce. He's just, like, murdering whores and then tries to pin it on Bruce Wayne to ruin Bruce's life because he couldn't sleep with Bruce's mom at all. And he kind of, he kind of reminds me of, like, um, the Mad Hatter in that sense where, like, every woman is Martha. Yeah, kinda every, like with every Mad Hatter, every woman, woman is, is Alice. Every blonde woman is Alice I, and then he kidnaps there them. are There are stories where the Mad Hatter just takes a random woman, puts her in a blonde wig, and then yeah. starts calling her Alice. I mean, what I'm familiar with is with the Mad Hatter is in the yeah. Arkham games because they felt the need. They were like, let's just put the Hatter in this one too. Yeah. I think he's in three of them. He, I know he's in one of them. Cause he's I, in, I know he's in um, he's in Asylum. He's, in, he's in Night. He's, he's in, in City. He's in Origins too. He's in City. 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 He's in City <coughs> because I remember City is the one where you get the cure. And yeah. it turns out it's just the Hatter formula. Mm-hmm. Speaking of Arkham Asylum, not not thinking the video game here, but um, the scene in Arkham Asylum where um Strange gets thrown down and the prisoners kill him. Yeah. Um, that was the only shot in the entire film that I felt was reminiscent of Manola's artwork was the look of the inmates right. in yeah. that scene. Yeah. The movie entirely. In the hype up to the movie, because I follow the animated movies coming out pretty, like, religiously, they were like, we are taking Gotham by Gaslight, and we're going to stay, like, as faithful as we can to Mignola's art style. Turns out they didn't do that at all, yeah, whatsoever. No, not at all. However, after the string of recent movies I've seen come out from DC, I'm going to say the art style is an improvement, but it is definitely not Mignola. Oh, yeah. like it reminded me a little bit of Bruce Tim Batman. I, yeah. Actually, I was going to say, I did get a lot of vibes from that. Like, there were some scenes that reminded me of the animated series where it was just silhouette fights. Mm-hmm. And, like, yeah. especially because they bring in the hot air balloons, which is a reference to the time, but is also a reference to uh, the yeah. animated series where the hot air balloons go throughout the city. So there's a lot of callbacks to other Batman series in the movie beyond just um, the Gotham by Gaslight and book. And every side character is Hey, my name is this character that's a villain from the comics. Yeah, but I, I liked that in the movie because they didn't do that so much in the book. Which they was, mentioned they mentioned two Dent. Pe- yeah, they mentioned Dent in the book because he's the district attorney, yeah. which makes sense. Yeah. And then they also refer to the Joker. Yeah, they show a picture by yeah. a um a brief description of a man poisoning older women to seal their fortunes and showing a picture of his wanted poster, which is just this deranged figure. And they mentioned that his gas went off and deranged him. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But um, 
a couple of people I've seen mention the fact that we have here the um, the dual copy with both issues of uh, Gotham by Gaslight, mm. um, where the movie takes both into account, but the first book is super short. So uh, Augustine, who wrote it, and Mignola, the artist, didn't really get a chance to like expound upon the DC universe as as a whole and like add in every single reference to every single uh, character in Batman's Rogue Gallery. But you know today, if they gave him the space and gave him like a full 42-page issue, mm-hmm. everybody would be in there. I, I would love to see that, honestly. I like the idea of Elseworlds Batmans. I yeah. Know, yeah. I, I know, like, I remember seeing the action figure for uh, Gotham by Gaslight yeah. Batman probably, like, years and years ago at a toy, uh, some shop. I was like, wow, that's really cool. And they had, like, a pirate and a black knight. And I was like... It's like both Marvel and DC both have one character each that I feel like is really adaptable to all different yeah. time periods in one-off stories like that, and it's Batman and Spider-Man. Spider-Man to a degree, yes. To, I just, I don't know, I'm really intrigued by the noir concept and the 2099 yeah. concept with him. And with Batman, just, like, Batman is so much fun to see different people take him and do their own thing with him. It's on the list. Wait until we get to 1602. Then you'll have a blast. Because 1602 already happened, right? 1602 is... Okay, so take uh, Gotham by Gaslight, Uh throw it in the Marvel Universe, Uh but put everybody in that book. Everybody? Everybody. 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 Am I in the book? Everybody in the book getting tipsy. Even Big Wheel, my favorite Spider-Man villain? Yes. Really? No. If Big Wheel is in that, I'll (laughs) fucking die. Spider-Boy does show up, though. But, uh... So, in the movie, though, they do kind of cram in more characters from Batman's universe. The thing is, I do think they handle it better than it could have been handled. I didn't really like Poison Ivy at first because they make her like this exotic dancer, but then they tie her into like the story. Like they did in the movie. Oh, you're, I, you I am talking about still on She's 1602. not in the book. I know. I thought you were talking about 1602 no. for some reason. Um, so, they make her like this exotic dancer. That's the first victim you see of Jack the Ripper. But then a lot of the other characters are cool, like uh, Sister Leslie. Who's supposed to be uh, Leslie Thompson, the nurse? I didn't realize that. See, I'm not super, super yeah. familiar with Batman in the comics, but I didn't. Okay, I didn't realize that. Yeah, she's an established character. She's a doctor that helps Bruce as a child. Mm-hmm. In this, she's a nun that helps Bruce Which as a child. Which makes total sense yeah. for the era. You have, um, you have Gordon as police commissioner. Sort of. Sort of. <laughs> um, you have Bullock, which is my one critique of the movie that I can't get past, and I will explain that later. Yeah, me too. What? Bullock. Okay, so my reasoning. Okay, what's your reasoning for Bullock? Well. They uh, they kind of like the way he acts. It's almost like a red herring. Like by the end of the movie, like it's him. Bullock did it. He disappears. He like he isn't part of the police chase when Batman and the Ripper are fighting, and then the Ripper gets away, and the, the police are chasing Batman, and that's when Bullock shows up, and he's like, "Shoot that man! Kill him dead!" I'm like, "Wow, that's kind of suspicious." And at the same time, like I don't know, I just like I just felt like it was him. He yawns at a funeral and covers his mouth with his left hand, and I'm like, "Oh, the Ripper's left-handed." I honestly thought it was going to be Bullock. Yeah, it seemed like him, and then at the last minute, they're like, hey, is it Harvey? And my biggest issue is that they didn't even, like, te- they didn't leave any clues that it was going to be Gordon. They're no. just like, hey, he's there was, Gordon. If you think back, the only one early on was him telling Batman to stay away from his house, this is his place, he's not supposed to, blah, 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 yeah. blah, blah. But, like, he's always, he's, I mean... I don't know how... I haven't read a lot of Batman comics, but in the movie, he's even like that. Yeah. Fred's chewing on our snack of choice. Tim Tams. Second podcast running. I was told by certain members of the podcast that it was going to be the snack that I have to bring every time. I mean... Yep. I should have brought those mini muffins. You said you were going to. Yeah, I forgot. But, um... So, my issue with Bullock, outside of the fact that it was clearly the entire movie leads you to think that it's going to be him... Is the fact that, so it's set in like pre turn of the century uh, Gotham. In American history, it's been a big influx of um, European immigrants coming to America to settle. So a lot of people, or especially in the our neck of the woods, it's where a lot of people's families came over. Yeah. Started setting up shop and stuff. You had like maybe three or four characters in the entirety of the movie that actually had an accent from not around here. And then everybody else had, like, the sternest, most modern American accent that you can possibly come up with. Bullock is one of the characters with an accent. He has a thick, distinct Irish accent, which makes which makes sense. Because back in the day, Irish would be the cops. Irish would also arrest Irish because that's all they did. It was a vicious cycle. 
My issue is there is a character in Batman history who is an Irish police officer with a thick Irish accent who could fill that gap, and they didn't use him. That'd be Chief O'Hara from the 66 uh, series okay. of TV, which he was like one of the... Even there was him and Gordon. He predates Bullock by a long shot. Bullock was like the animated series stuff, if I'm yeah. not mistaken. But, but Bullock has become more popular to modern. Bullock years. has become more popular. You could still put Bullock in there, but if you need an Irish police chief in a historically accurate setting, you would put O'Hara in there. And O'Hara's been in the comics because he was in yeah. Long Halloween, Dark Victory, where he gets murdered, I think, by Holiday. Either spoilers. Ho- either right. he dies. We're gonna do those books on this podcast, by the way. It's on the well, list. Now that, I don't need to. That read. way, my friend Caleb can show up because he loves those books. But um, so he get he's killed, but he's also uh, in those books they refer to a character called Gilda Dent, Harvey Dent's wife, who's also referred to in the movie in uh, Gotham by Gaslight. And I have literally never seen her referenced any other time outside of the Jeff Loeb books and this movie. Hmm. So if you're gonna refer to one character from Long uh, Halloween Dark Victory, just bring in O'Hara too. That's my gripe. They didn't use O'Hara, and yeah. they had the opportunity. I mean, I can't think of the last non-comic piece of Batman media I had, like, experience. I didn't have Bullock, though. Yeah. He was in the movies. He was in the games. He was awful in the movies. Is I haven't seen a single DC Universe movie with Batman in it. I had, was he in, is he he in the Disney Universe? He wasn't in Justice League, and he wasn't in um, Batman vs. Okay, because I haven't seen either of those. But I imagine he'll be in Something. The Batman. The Batman when they if, find, when they cycle yeah. through enough directors. And actors. When they finally convince um, Ben Affleck, Ben Affleck to come out of his spiraling depression. But um, what was it? But yeah, other than like a lot of the other historical facts though, and like kind of setting type stuff, seemed really cool in the movie. Like I like I said, I'm not an expert, so I can't speak to fact. Uh, but I do study a lot of Irish history in Ireland and Irish history in early America when they started migrating over. So that's at least a topic I can talk about with some decency and formality. But uh, the other topic I can talk about is references in the goddamn movie to other pieces of the Batman mythos. I loved it. Like, in the beginning, Batman's running around the city when you first meet the Batman. He's several blocks over from the murder. He's stopping a woman being mugged. By who? Uh, Robins. Ro- uh, what a was street it? gang of Robins. Uh, uh, <laughs> yep, I kept waiting for one of them to be... <laughs> they're, uh, no, they're... Uh, their handler, quote unquote, their boss that they work for, referred to them as some sort of a Robin. I can't remember what it was, but it was like street slang for a burglar. Okay. Their leader was Dick Grayson, the blue-eyed, dark-haired individual who fought with uh, a pipe. It was kind of like his uh, his sta- the screamers. The screamers. Then you had the red-haired Jason Todd, <laughs> aka Red Hood, who was a punk and fought with a knife, the only lethal weapon in the group, and the most like aggravated little pissant of them. And then you had young little Tim Drake fighting with his pool cue or bow staff. You had the three most notable Robins because they're not bringing Damien into this movie. You're not getting Stephanie Brown and you're not getting Barbara Gordon. Mm-hmm. The only Barbara Gordon you get is referred to with Barbara and James being in bed when yeah. their dad has a nightmare about his mom being his wife being murdered. Which is weird. Which I get at that point in time because you still thought he was a good guy. Yeah, but So you were like, then, oh, you're worried that Barbara's going to get killed because the murderer is on the loose and you think he might get your wife. Turns out later on he's abusive to her. He's my fucked up face. Yeah, he's like thrown acid in her face. He's and emotionally... she's all for it. Yeah, no, but he's like emotionally and like mentally manipulated her. And he's also like on the... He says wives are the worst whores there are. <laughs> and I'm like... It, it just... Like, I get... You made a comment about it being like all of his ideals taken to these absurd extremes. Yeah, the righteous uncorruptibleness of it just, James Gordon. It does, like, I, that's one of the reasons why I liked the comic more than the movie. I just, I really didn't like the Gordon twist. Yeah, the Gordon twist kills it at the end because his ideology is, like, the ideology of, like, every hateful group, past and present. He's a misogynist. He hates prostitution. He's, like, a righteous Catholic. But he's also a know-nothing. And, like, anti-like, what is it, illiteracy. He's like, I hate people that can't read and write. I hate women. I hate whores. I hate immigrants. So I hate everyone that's not a straight white man. I literally hate everybody that's not a straight white Christian. And I'm like, that doesn't even, like, it makes sense. But at the same point in time, what a way to, like, alienate the entirety of your audience. Because nobody's, like, can understand that concept. 
But oh, even that, no. like, that, you see now, like, they're, but they're not even, reading comic books. They're out burning doing flags. Doing that as a character makes sense. Yeah, it just doesn't Brilliant. feel like it should be Gordon. And it's not like yeah. I have this ridiculous attachment to the character. I don't like Batman is fun, but I've never really cared that much about Batman. It's just it doesn't feel like an exploration of Gordon in that era to me. Wait, your cat. <laughs> Oh shit, it's coming at me. Leave her alone. She's enough of an asshole as it is. I she can't. doesn't need motivation to be an asshole. No. See, look, now she's attacking Tom. Yep. Yep. She already she clawed my knee before. You saw that, I John. Fucking <laughs> she, she reached was, over and dug. She was using the arm of the couch to do like her like yep. claw thing that cats do, and then she immediately just saw Tom's thigh and was like, "Wow, that's much better." <laughs> right into his thigh. But um, so my opinion on the book is it's a solid Elseworld story. I mean, I've read a number of Elseworld stories, not mo- most of them not being Batman. I've read a good deal of Superman ones, though. Um, it's pretty solid as far as, like, Elseworld Batman goes. If you want to see an Elseworld Batman book that has, like, references to everybody in it, you would pick up the currently going, soon to be over, uh, White Knight by Sean Gordon Murphy, because it takes the animated series, expounds upon it, and puts everybody in it, and it's fantastic. Did they ever, I mean, I know I saw a thing, but they ever do, like, a, a Pirate Batman? Uh, pirate Batman is from Grant Morrison's run when Batman gets sent back in time by Darkseid and he has to relive his life over and over again as Batman in every single generation. That's pretty dope. Pirate Batman must be cool as shit. Oh, it's super dumb. I mean, does he have, like, is it just him on the pirate ship by himself? Like, so, I don't really remember. trying to man the sails It's been years else? since I read it because it's absolute garbage because Grant Morrison's a, like a guy from Scotland who just trips balls and then writes comic books <laughs> and people say it's like... They should give him Doctor Strange. <laughs> Oof. Oh, dude. Tom has the book. I gave it to him. It's, um... Oh, what is it? It's the History of Superheroes that I gave you. Yes. I can't remember the actual title of it. But, like, he goes into detail about how everybody that wrote Doctor Strange originally was doing drugs. Like, Yeah, you've... Have you read the, um, Doctor Strange book I gave you? No, it's... The big in, Steve Ditko No, it's collection? sitting in a stack in my room. Tom, there's also a bigger stack in my room that's supposed to go to you and Amanda that I totally mm-hmm. forgot to bring today, but... <laughs> One of my chopped liver. John, how much of my stuff do you have in your room right uh, now? How much, much of your stuff do I have in my room? 98% of my comic book collection is from Fred. I will agree with that and say the same about my room. Like, like I show, I sent Fred a picture a few months ago of <laughs> my actual collection of comics that I bought with my money, and it's like not even an inch thick, and then there's Fred's, which is a full like three and a half feet. It's okay. You still have a big one. Jeez. Hey, three shillings away. See, I can't, I can't, I can't have shelves. I need all the shelves for other things, like knickknacks and patty wax. Get a dog a bone. Yes. But um, I don't know. I'm trying because the other day when we were brainstorming for this podcast, we were like, we're gonna have a list of things to talk about instead of just rambling and oh, so I'm just far. Gonna, I'm about to read through that chat that we have so we can bring up some points. Okay, cool. So John's finding the points, which shouldn't be too far buried because the last couple of days he's just been like, hey, you guys ready to film? No, we're busy. Cool. I'm gonna go get food. I got stabbed in the arm several times because <laughs> the, the nurse could not find my vein. <laughs> Awesome. Yeah, that's that's been the, that's been the normal lately. Bleeding all over the place. Yep. She just couldn't find it. I was like, I'm, I'm going to pass out from blood loss. That's been minute. happening to pretty much everyone I know lately getting blood work done. Don't get your blood work done in Rhode Island, folks. Um, looking for so the Tom's, Tom's direct quote from when he finished the movie. So I just finished watching the movie. What the fuck was that plot twist? <laughs> I'm pretty sure I said the same thing to Fred. Oh, yeah. Fred, I finished... I started it, the movie after Fred and finished before because of time discrepancy, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> because I, I started the movie, and then I had to um, I had to moderate for a live stream. Yeah. So I lost about an hour and a half, and then I got back to the movie. John was already in on it. Because I, I was like 45 minutes in before you started watching it. Yeah. It, the movie's like an hour and a half long. You brought it up, and I was like, shit, I should watch it. I sat down, popped open a model, started working on it, watching the movie. I did more mm-hmm. watching the movie than I did model. It, it, the movie itself, the fight scenes are great. Animation, solid quality. I um, like the one thing I did like. I know Tom didn't read it, but in the second half of the book, which is almost completely abandoned in the movie, uh, to to some degree, uh, the World Fair is in the second half, and yeah. the blimp fights are in the second half of the book, which is the second issue of Gotham by Gaslight. There's like at one point, which this, is not drawn by Manola, right? No, but it's all in the movie. The, this this fucking like crate gets opened up and then this machine comes out and it's like a fucking old style machine gun with the barrel on wheels <coughs> oh, with the original... a joker head on it and it's just going through the fairground shooting its machine gun and Bruce Wayne being the human Adonis that he is destroys it like a pole or some shit but I was like that it looks like a joker invention from 
back in the day. But um, it was you, a cool thing. But did you, again, did you find the weird. points? Huh? Did you find the points? Uh, I was kind of just reading through stuff. It's not so much we had points that we were just. No, I, no. At one point, Tom actually was like, "Oh, here's some points we could bring up." Tom oh, says so one thing that stood out to me in both versions is how much I just really like ba- how Batman feels in this era, and that's something I think we can all agree. Yeah, on. yeah. He works great in whatever era you put him in. But um, if Batman I remember Beyond, future Batman, correctly, don't be shit. Think the points that we had mentioned we already talked about because cool. it was Minola's art, right? And you and John coming the from your history hackers. perspectives. Yeah. I mean, um, I don't. I'm, I'm no history major. I do enjoy history, just yeah. not this history. I like yeah, like 1919. Like See now, this is an era in history that's always very much interested me. But I feel like we kind of yeah. captured Born everything shit. about you know that. Why? There's no air points. Yeah. Um. There's a cool thing though in the movie. Again, back to that. Um, his blips, John. There's yeah. there's the guy that uh is currently employing the three Robins. And he's like, oh, Batman, you can't take me because I fight. Um, no, it wasn't him. It was Gordon being like, I fight um, in such and such a style. And he refers to like the London rules, which um, I, was, I was reading a book on early Irish um, mobsters and stuff. And they used to have fight rings all over the United States. And they played by those rules. And it was literally a no holds bar competition where you just drag out and you just try to pummel the other guy to like unconsciousness or death there was Whoa. this one dude one and he was like had this big rep when I was California beat some guys out there <coughs> and then the guy thought he cheated so he challenges him to a fight outside of the ring and it was bring your own weapons so he thought it was just gonna be like sticks or like brass knuckles or something the guy shows up with two meat cleavers holds on to one and throws the other one and buries it between the other guy's feet and he's like pick it up the other dude backed out of the fight right there and like Hands down, the boxer won, like, the round, and then won the fight afterwards where he's accused of cheating. And, like, that's the type of fights that Gordon was talking about being in, which is why he could go blow for blow with Batman. The movie focuses more on the action and, like, the usual crime-fighting side of Batman, whereas the book definitely leans, and some part of the movie, leans towards Batman being the detective. But that's only because in the book, he's in prison for a while, and he has to try to solve his own case. Yeah, yeah. Meanwhile, that was in, another element I missed in the movie. In the movie, he's in prison for like three hours. He's in a cool prison fight, and, honestly, and then gets that out. Should have tipped me off to the um, Gordon element really changing because in the book it was Gordon that delivered him all of the info to help him piece it together while he was in prison, yeah. wasn't it? Yeah. yeah, but he doesn't piece anything together while he's in prison. Uh, no, he does. In the book, he does. In the book, he does. In the movie, I think he figures it out. Only very lately. Yeah. No, he figures it out because he has to go to Gordon's house. And then he stumbles upon Gordon's secret chambers. Yeah. And then his yeah. wife. He's but he was—he didn't go there looking for that. That's like the only that. detect. That's the only clue that Batman gets. He sees the scratches on the floor, and Bob yeah. Gordon's like, "You can't go in there." And then he goes in there. And, and that scene, though, one of the pictures on the wall. Have you guys ever seen the old style tough guy meme where yep. it's the guy with his arms up? Yeah. That's one of the pictures on his wall. Yeah. I saw that. I was like, "What the fuck is this?" Fucking memes. That memes one. in my Batman. But no, memes it's... in your Pacific Rim. Memes in your Batman. In the in the book, they definitely lean to- more towards the world's greatest detective angle. Yeah. Trying to play him off as a detective of the time period, whereas in the movie, they try to do that, but they act they play more into like the oh he's Batman angle. He sits at a chemistry set. He does. <laughs> He's mixing wow. something and Alfred's like, oh, and, sir. And like they said in... Okay, here's something I will say. No Batman can ever do Alfred disjustice. Alfred is just the best character. Um, yeah. uh, you you just openly admitted to never seeing like the Nolan movies, right? I like, yeah, I like Alfred, Alfred I like Alfred. You get oh, crying movies. Michael Caine. Oh, yeah. you were a little boy. I love it, Michael what, Caine. Why can't Alfred? you just stop being Batman and like have a family so I can have grandchildren? I won't marry another member of the Wayne family. <laughs> I quit. I married enough members of the Wayne family. I quit. And when he cries at the end of Rising, like every time I see that, I'm just like, oh god! Like I, I feel, I honestly not... want to die when I hear Michael Caine cry. I have not seen Rises since the midnight showing. Oh my god, dude! Just fucking. I had to wait a couple days to go oh. see that movie only because of what happened around the time of it coming out. But yeah. Yes, no, I saw it at midnight and then walked out to the news. Yeah. And I was like, wow. I also needed a ride to get there because I don't think I had a car at that point. So I also had to wait a couple days for my dad to go. That's true. See, I'm looking through, like, looking through the comic. I feel like you don't... I feel like there's not a lot of Batman in this comic. There's a lot of, like, 
talking and yeah. parties and Bruce Wayne being whatever he is. And but to be fair, thing, he ends up in prison pretty quick. Like, yeah, I'm flipping through. He's in there like. But when you, right when you remember, it's a pretty quick comic. There's though. not like, a lot a of comic read. either. Yeah. Longer videos get us more uh, advertisement space. <laughs> what happened? I'm just giving you guys a heads up. She's just letting us know it's a half hour. Is it? Okay. Yeah. But um, we, we should know that. It beeped twice. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm like, I'm, I'm out of it. John is so used to beeping. It's almost like he lives I, there. I don't hear it. Like, I'm, I sleep on the other side of this wall. <laughs> it's almost like he lives beep. here. Never. That's, I don't live here. That's why I offered to use that open space in my house for right now. But hey, I like. We could go to my house and have the furnace kick in every can, ten minutes. I keep forgetting I can mute that for like two hours. If you press the alarm button or the mute, it mutes it for two hours. Yeah, but if we don't mute it, we know what, like, how long we're recording for. That's true. <laughs> but uh, I don't know. I just yeah, it's not a lot of comic though. Like the book yeah. itself looks bigger, but that's because it's both halves. If I gotta say anything, I guess I wouldn't say I hate it. I just feel I don't feel pot like I don't feel I don't go to either end of hate or like it was just kind of like there. It was a Batman story. Yeah. Very, like, low-key. Just because, like, maybe if I... Like, I like the movie because they snuck more references in. They snuck... You well, know, not snuck, but Hugo Strange and... who else? They mentioned somebody else, so I was, I was like, oh, that's kind of cool. I know, well, they had Leslie Nielsen. They had... Uh, oh, Harley Quinn's in it. Was she? She's the drunk old lady. Is that her name? I know she was played by Tara Strong. I no, think. she's Tara Strong. She's doing Harley's voice, and her name was, like, Marley. Oh, okay. Oh, they have Selena Kyle. Yeah, of who course. Who is pretty cool in the... Yeah. Like, Batman is like, I saved you. She's like, I don't need to be saved. And she's like, you don't even have to walk me back to my apartment. She turns around and he's gone. And she's like, well, at least he gave me that. Actually, that's funny because in the book, uh, when Batman leaves Gordon at the end of the story, he's like, I am leaving. And, like, announces it, which he never does ever. Hmm. And Selina Kyle is a lion tamer, which is very cool. In my opinion, at least. Well, she's an all-around performer. Yeah. You have to commit to the role. And that, the practice. fucking musical number of hers gave me PTSD flashbacks of Batman and Harley, one of the last DC animated See, movies. I don't think I've seen a single other DC animated Tom, film. Tom, don't like Batman. And Tom, Batman. I have most of them. I will lend them to you. I've I will heard, give you the good ones. Uh, from just from however many years ago, I heard the Wonder Woman one was really good. Wonder Woman's okay. Uh, she fights Ares. Well, I haven't seen that one. I have it. Uh, I can lend it to you guys. I've seen the one where Batman fights a British guy. I mean, Superman fights a British oh, guy. Oh, Superman versus the Elite? Yeah, I've seen that one. I've seen the one with dinosaurs and the Justice League and Martian Manhunter. Oh, that one's uh, Justice League New Frontier that's based off a comic. It's very good. It I thought that was War. That, no, what? War? Maybe it's not Justice League War? Justice League War know. is them versus Darkseid. Justice League New Frontier is based off the Darwin Cookbook. The movie holds on to the art style incredibly well as opposed to this. Where What's it completely the one where it? Fuck, someone tries to attack Darkseid? And they get fucking swatted away, and then the two parademons jump on that person after they hit the ground and start punching the shit out of them. <laughs> that's probably. I fucking, um, I don't remember who it is, but someone like jumps. That's at probably. Dark that's probably dark. That's Justice League War. That's based off the New Fifty Two continuity. It's some lame fucking superhero. It's either like it's either Green Arrow or I don't remember that one. I'd have to. You'd have to like show me the scene so I could tell you because I don't. He wasn't in Justice League War, and I don't really know it's how many hilarious. other. How many other appearances? That might be. That might just be a Justice League cartoon because he shows up in the Justice League cartoon a couple times. Maybe it was a cartoon. But uh, what else is there? Um, about that, about this that I didn't particularly like. For me, I it like I said, this is an era that I'm very interested in, and I've never been the world's biggest Batman fan, but I like the character, and it's fun seeing him in different eras. So that was the real appeal to me. The story was really nothing special. I love Manola. I liked the art, but it wasn't my favorite, you know, stuff that Manola's ever done. So it was just, to me, it was very fine, but I didn't love it. Yeah. There were just, there were elements that really struck a chord with me. Yeah, I get it. I mainly just chose this because I know Tom likes Manola. I know John likes Batman. Yeah. I know we needed, yeah. I know we needed books that had titles that, like... Would get us an audience to be quick, baby enough. Giants, not I Kill where Giants. Where the movie is out, and then I, Dude, I heard that, someone say it's already on iTunes. That movie is nowhere, and if it's on iTunes, I gotta go buy it and watch it because tomorrow's the last day of my vacation. <laughs> but like, um, <laughs> beer's good. But uh, I love beer. Ooh. Can we just talk about beer for a while now? But, we um, are choose issues and brews. Yeah, uh, John, what are you drinking this evening? Shandies. Ooh, travelers specifically. I got the. Uh, I had one blackberry shandy, which is seasonal. Very good. And then I have the Traveler Aloha Pineapple Shandy, which I don't Ooh, think that actually season, sounds really good. But it's pretty good. I that have one a. Does uh, sound really I good. am also enjoying a shandy. I am having a local Narragansett Dell's lemonade flavored shandy, and of course, we having Tim Tams up in this bitch. Of course, I'm a big fan of shandies. Yeah. 
If I were ever to start a company, I'd call it Shandy Cheeks. <laughs> wow. I think that's the note this just ends on. Oh, is it? Because I was going to make an announcement that... So the book's been passed around. Uh, Tom, have you read the Bible? I'm going home <clears throat> now. No, I'm going to read it now. Okay. So... I, know. I, I only like to read for one podcast at a time, Fred. Okay, well, I mean, we were trying to... I was, didn't Fred. know if you had started reading it or not because it's been a while. I know. I, 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 okay. I got overwhelmed. So... I'll read it now. Yeah. I'll go home, I'll look at my copy, and then possibly lend it to John. Um, the next book we're doing is one I've been waiting to do forever. Um, punk Happy rock. Easter. Yeah, Happy Easter. I'm like, hey, it's April. It's both my birthday month and Easter, so this book will totally work. Can't wait to see it in May. April Fool's. Yes. Yeah. It's going to be um, Punk Rock Jesus by my favorite writer, author, uh, Sean Gordon Murphy. So that's coming out and soon. And I will read it. And So should I just pass my copy to Amanda? Yeah. Well, so that's you, probably you can, a good idea. You can, you can join this podcast. Yeah. And she's only like the only other person that at the beginning was like, we got to do this. I think the only other person more excited than me to do it. Mm. What's cat. after that? Um, After that, I don't know. I'd have to go through because Tom has part of the stack. Yeah, just tell me what's in the stack that it's I should read. Fucking, and... I don't know. Like, no, like, I, like what like what, what I should prioritize reading. Just, well, you'd have to show me a picture I of I read stack. Aliens versus Predator versus Judge Dredd, and that was a thing. Well, no, only because oh. I... I picked something good for June. That's my birthday. Okay. Oh, that's uh, awful. Marvel 1602? It was bad. for me. Okay. Because that's uh, Gotham by Gaslight, but it's got all the Marvel characters in it, like Doctor Strange and Daredevil. Doctor Strange. X-Men, who are all tree like freaks from the church, and your cat has a lot of knots. Yeah. Your cat also likes chirping. We're trying to, we've been, it's a pain to pull them out, because it hurts her, and I don't know why we don't cut them out. But enough about the cat. It's just, she's right here. So, this... I also think that we should do, maybe just a short podcast after everybody. Infinity War? Yeah. Yes. I have Thursday. And I asked for Friday off. They gave me Thursday off. What, what are we doing? I guess that works. A short post Infinity War podcast. Ooh, uh, Can we should also just to tie rooted in comics. We've all read. Have we all read Infinity Gauntlet? Yes. Okay. Um, Wait. My thing. Have um, I read Infinity Gauntlet? Yes, you have. I've wanted to. Uh, I don't. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I know this Infinity War and Infinity Gauntlet. I don't know which one. Infinity I read. Gauntlet is the he one that matters. He just gives me stuff and I read it. So here's Slowly. the thing. I don't know when I'm going to see the movie. Come on Thursday. Yeah. Well, Fred has to go to bed at 8 o'clock. We'll go to it's, the 7. It's 2, isn't it like 2.50? It's 2, I know, it's like, it's... It's 2 and a half hours. Yeah, it's, it's 159 minutes, I think I heard. Something like that. Yeah. So, yeah. Just but a I, minute under 2 and a half hours. Yeah, Fred. but here's the thing. I also have a significant other I have to go see it with. Oh, Fred, I have, I told you I have the night off. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> you know that's already an in-joke that we have anyway. I know. Yeah, I know. That's why she glares at me every time I see her. That's why the other day when I was at the Pete Bruins game, she was like, everybody but the Kennedy you like talking to is here. Hey! <laughs> I was at work. Yeah. Without Fred. Yeah, it's awful. Yeah, it is. We always send these podcasts talking about how me and John work together. I can't yep. wait till you come back. Who's? And we'll see. Uh, Sunday, I think. If I go film there, I could work with you guys. Yeah. No, you, but you'd never see me. I saw you twice yeah. now. But I, found, found I, that, uh, I finally know that you work there. I found that Justice League gif I was talking about. It's in Justice League War. Green Lantern goes at Darkseid with a big spiky fist. Okay. Gets backhanded into a building, hits the building, falls to the ground, and then the parademons jump on him and start pummeling yeah. shit at him. No, that makes sense. That's Darkseid War. That's a perfect Justice gift for describing a bad week. Pretty much. This kid's so soft. Yeah. And she, she chirps. Soft. She's not a hard cat. She doesn't know what the outside world is like. I also have to like take a shower outside now because my mom's deadly allergic to cats. So. <laughs> yeah, so am I. <laughs> Go What's hug that? John. I have a cat. Yeah, I know. It's weird. <laughs> is that that for this time? Uh, that's that. That's me. No, that's guys, that. keep going for another minute. Why? Another Why? Minute. Because we'll be exactly at 40 minutes. <laughs> yeah, but then I'm going to chop some off of the beginning and we're um, not going to be at exactly 40. Um... Comic books. Oh shit! What, Fred? Uh, no, I'm gonna do this live on air right now. I'm down on my knee, Fred. Will you marry me? I was gonna say we could have done a recommended reading list for me and Amanda, but we totally blew that opportunity because we vamped for like the last ten minutes. So yep. you'd have to cut out ten minutes of vamping just to get to the idea that we just had. No. Oh well. Next time that that's gonna. Take yeah. Place. I would recommend Overwatch Anthology Volume One. I almost picked that up the other day. Infidel. You should all read and watch the, the greatest comic slash show in the world, Robert Kirkman's The Walking Dead. 
I heard what happened in the okay. season. It's bad. I'm it's stopping this now. I heard. I, I, I watched a recap. It's done. To see what happened. Say bye, guys. Bye, bye guys. guys.